It's my turn to tease Python stories from Indonesia coming your way next. Well, not next, because I'm going to do the tease to tell you to like, subscribe, and follow This Is Your Early News. And then Scout will do something inane. And then I'll do the Python story that you've been waiting for. So please, if if you're, I don't, even if you don't like us, like, subscribe, and follow. All you got to do is delete the stuff that shows up. No big deal. Um, if you're some sort of strange person like we are, when the notice shows up, you can actually listen to the show or watch the show. Or, or if you're really weird, you can watch and listen to the show and see how they match up. There you go. There you go. I love how you can just just take this stuff and and solidify it into these tiny little bits of information. Thank you. And it's so compact. You're mocking me now, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. According to recent reports, Chinese police forces have been operating out of clandestine bases and using their presence to track and threaten dissidents. All right, everybody stand up who's really amazed. Go ahead. The Dutch government has told me they were really amazed. Oh, well, they're calling them illegal and said it is investigating exactly what they're doing here. Well, duh. Yeah, huh? While officials in Canada said they're investigating so-called police stations, However, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Spanish civil rights group Safeguard Defenders first claimed that Chinese police forces from the cities of Fuzhou and Qingtian were running overseas police service stations across the West. Since 2018, the group says, more than 38 police service stations have appeared in dozens of countries spread across five different continents. Such overseas police service stations have been used by police back in China to carry out such, oh, I don't know, persuasion to return operations on foreign soil, including Europe. Would they be like kidnapping and getting back to China? Uh, Don't know if they've been kidnapped yet, but the persuasion to return is, you know, we know where you live. We know where your kids are. Do you want to see your grandma again? Um, I knew what that part was. I'm just thinking, why go through all that effort of wasting syllables when you just, you know, drug them? them. Put them in a box in the back. Lawmakers in both England and and, and uh, Scotland are also planning on investigating the stations. Chinese officials have not denied the existence of the service stations, but say, are you ready? No, oh, no. I think some of our American journalists are working with them. They're helping them on spin. Well, they worked with the Russians a long time, so, you know. They exist to provide bureaucratic services to Chinese citizens and don't involve police operations. Said the guy with a seeing eye dog and a cane. Right, exactly. Exactly. So off to Python land. A missing grandma vanished just after a walk. Oh. 54 year old Jara went for a walk to collect rubber in a forest near her family home in Jambi, Indonesia. Concerned relatives reported her missing when she didn't return from the jungle. Search party organized by locals began by searching through the dense woods in the Tanjung Jabung Barat Regency. Uh, soon after, residents and police stumbled upon a, a seven-meter-long python with a big old swollen tummy. Yuck. It was spotted in a clearing among the trees while they were out hunting for Grandma. The snake's stomach was sliced open, and... um. Let's just say missing grandma wasn't missing anymore. Nope, she was found whole. Like you do. Yeah. There is actual footage out there that shows Granny's remains as they were inside the snake's digestive tract. I had a chance to chase that down, but didn't because really I didn't want to. No. I'm just not interested in seeing it. Her body was largely intact, as were the clothes she was wearing, despite being eaten by the snake. Oh, yeah. Anto, who is the head of the Terjan Gaja village there, said the pythons, the python was thought to have bitten the gram with its fearsome fangs, and then the snake would, of course, done what pythons do. You wrap around your victim, you suffocate the victim, and then when they stop breathing, apparently you have to really unhinge those jaws to get a full-size grandma. But you can. But he did. The incident sparked a big sparked, python. And, and a full python. <laughs> yes. 
The, you and I could catch this python because he ain't going fast. No. Please, dude, I'm digesting. <laughs> He's rocking back and forth. Oh. The incident. Oh. Can snakes rock back and forth? Mm-hmm. They slid their back and forth. Randy the incident sparked side to side. This, like the lemur. Yeah. The incident sparked panic within the village, and there have been a lot of python sightings in recent weeks. Earlier residents tried to catch a nine meter snake. But failed as well. Let's be honest, the snake was just huge and people really didn't want to. Anto said that villagers are now worried that bigger snakes are still in the forest. This giant snake has also swallowed two resident goats. Thank you. Indonesia is known for a large population of the reticulated pythons. These are the biggest in the world. Yep. The similar to one that took down 54 old grandma. Mm. They, they otherwise live in remote forests and feed on wild animals only occasionally on human beings. This right. is the. Right, they I believe this like... is only the third or fourth proven. I mean, there are stories of dozens and dozens of yeah. people being, but this is like only the third or fourth that they've actually got proof of. Mm-hmm. They are known as one of the world's largest and heaviest reptiles. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Ugh. Let's go from disgusting to stupid. We can do that. Ellis Lloyd Jones, twenty-four, bought a tiny camera. Attached to an ear picking stick so he could see what was going on with the stubborn earwax he was ha- having trouble with. The ear picking stick. Ear picking stick? Would yeah. it be like a it's tiny camera? Would it be like a set of car keys? Swab with the. <laughs> Don't uh, what I saw. No, it actually. I want to know how tiny the camera is, for God's sake. Oh, really minuscule. Um, and the, and the stick, um, looks more like a toothpick, really, you know, a long one. I'm not poking a toothpick in my ear. I had enough of your trouble. In any case, he stuck the, the camera in there (laughs) and loosened some of the earwax and really seeing the pictures, you think this guy has never cleaned his ears in his life. (laughs) Oh, yuck, yuck. Then he spotted a white round object hiding deep in his ear canal. His ear had swallowed a diamond. He pulled it out. Of course he did. Just any guess on what it might have been. It was a larva of something, wasn't it? Sticker from a gala apple. I I believe. Um, nope. Most of the sentences I would put here have an expletive in them, so I'll just let you go on. He says he has. What one. the hell, Homer? What? <laughs> He says he hasn't eaten one since he was a child. So there's some potential. (laughs) So there is a chance. (laughs) It's either that or, or, you know, somebody close to him thought they were funny. No, Wet Willie should not be done with apple stickers. (laughs) The stand-up comedian and drag queen of Triorchy in the Rhonda Far Valley, South Wales, then shared that video on Tiki Taki. Clips been now shared over 4 million times. The viewers were left baffled, baffled, I say, that it had been hidden for so long. Well, that's, they were baffled after they threw up. I'm just going to say that right now and for the record. Honestly, don't you think TikTok should really be Tick Tacky? Most <laughs> right. Of the time? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> tacky Tick. Tiki Tick. A young bar... I've got an animal thing going on here. Oh, good. A young bar-tailed godwit appears to have set a non-stop distance record for migratory birds. Okay. He flew at least 13,560 kilometers or just over 8,400 miles from Alaska to the Australian state of Tasmania. The bird was tagged as a hatchling in Alaska, and now they can do this because the tracking chips, right? They put GPS chips on the little tracking stuff. Yeah. Okay. He was tracked last summer, two summers ago. Anyway, it's got a GPS chip and a tiny solar panel that enables an international research team. Well, of course it did, because, you know, gas would be gross. Looks like a To follow its first annual migration across the Pacific Ocean. BirdLife Tasmania convener, convener. Wow, I thought that was just a guy to get people together for meetings. Anyway, uh, Eric Wooler said because the bird was so young, its gender wasn't known yet. About five months old, it left Southwest Alaska at the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta on August thirteenth. 
and touched down 11 days later at Anson's Bay on the island of Tasmania's northeastern tip, October 24th. According to data from Germany's Max Planck Institute for Ornithology. I had no idea there was one. The research, Thanks, Max. The research has not been published and has not been peer-reviewed, so we're going on this guy's word. No, okay, okay. The bird started on a southwestern course toward Japan, turned southeast over Alaska's Aleutian Island, and he got there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, it was over 13,500 kilometers, just over 8,400 miles without stopping. Did it stopping. rest? R- right. That's what I... Without it, stopping. Must have been absolutely... Didn't stop. Tuckered out when he this got there. This would be the Mark Spitz of <laughs> tiny little birds. <laughs> the Mark Spitz. Guinness, I don't know. Guinness World Records lists the longest recorded migration by a bird without stopping for food or rest. At 12,200 kilometers, which, if you do the converse, is over 7,580 miles. That was by a satellite-tagged male bar-tailed godwit. Must be this godwit thing. Flying yep. from Alaska to New Zealand. So we've got the same route going, yeah. I guess. Uh, well, now that, that flight was recorded in 2020, though, as part of the same decade-old research project, which yeah. also in called, involves China's Fudan University, New Zealand's Massa University and the Global Flyway Network. No, I didn't know there was one of those either. I like the name of though, the Global Flyway Network. I wonder what the uniforms look like. I'm guessing suit and tie. (laughs) I'm guessing guessing not. With a pocket protector. (laughs) Because you've got to really be nerdy to. (laughs) That same bird that was listed in 2020 broke its own record. With a 13,000 kilometer or 8,100 mile flight on its next migration. But Guinness has yet to acknowledge that feat. And, you know, nothing's true till Guinness says so. No, that's true. That is absolutely true. And I think it has to do with the number of beers the screening uh, group is drinking. Absolutely. And how fast, because right. sometimes the screening starts on a Tuesday, doesn't end until the following Wednesday. Right. Wooler said researchers did not know whether the latest bird, known by its satellite tag, He's got a, such a spiffy name. It's known as Bird 234684. Oh. Flew alone or as part of a flock. Ah. Like the Wooler, there are so few birds that have been tagged. We don't know adult birds. We don't know adult birds depart Alaska earlier than juveniles. So the tagged bird was unlikely to have followed more experienced travelers south. Hmm. Wooler hopes to actually see the bird once the wet weather clears in the remote corner of Tasmania, where we'll spend, of course, much time fattening up, having lost half of its body weight on its journey. On its journey, no, it's like Rob, the freaking Tour de France. Just close circuit to my wife. Yeah, I am not doing that. <laughs> Heck, it's hard to get him to go downstairs and upstairs. It's, once I'm down here, yeah, I'm settled for the night. <laughs> you went down there at eleven in the morning, and <laughs> what's your problem? It was nearly twilight. I text Shelby. She comes over, gets me something I need. We're good. <laughs> Honey, can you get me my foot cream? <laughs> Shelby, could look can you grab me the remote that's right over there? <laughs> Jeez, I'm not in her favorite grandpa anymore. <laughs> this is true, really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network. <laughs>